Hello everyone, it's Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, DevOps TV, and we're here in London for DevOps Enterprise Summit UK 2018, and happy to be joined by folks who just presented earlier. Uh, they're no strangers to the Does crowd, right, and to Does fans around the world. Scott Pruitt. Pru. Pru. And Erica Morrison from CSG. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you for having us. Thank it's my pleasure. Thank you for coming. And uh, thank you for, you know, we, I, this is one of our last ones today and appreciate you making time. So guys, you, ex what, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Ex explain to our audience what your presentation today, guys. What was it on? Uh, so, go ahead, Erica, you first. Yeah, so, uh, so we've kind of had a theme over the last several years chronicling CSG's DevOps journey. Yep. And so each year is kind of focused on what's new and improved that year. And so we had a, a lot of different snippets today, things around a uh, service owner model that we've transformed to, some business and culture metrics. And then we spotlighted some specific teams to kind of see what it's like in the trenches with those teams, cultural transformations, and then I talked a little bit about public cloud. And, uh, and then kind of a continued launching point from there as we continue going through our journey. And this, is, uh, this experience part is kind of the third time that we've actually presented similar content, but uh, I'm always pretty intent on refreshing areas of it with things we've learned throughout the year. So uh, it's similar to what we did, um, what we actually did present in, in San Fran, but then we refreshed it with you know, the, cl the cloud, cloud work that Erica's mm -hmm. teams have done, taking our monitoring systems to the cloud, uh, refreshed it with our updated metrics, you know, the pr performance that we've seen. Um, refreshed it with new challenges that, you know, we, we have. Um, you know, continue and try to spread really kind of DevOps, but understanding across like the entire organization to other groups, to product management, uh, security and audit, and really getting a lot of those folks now involved because as we keep improving, we keep running into other areas that now we need to figure out actually how to get them on the same journey that we're on. Sure. It's been kind of cool because Scott and I, this is the third time we've given a, a version of this presentation. And every time we do it, we go back and look at the slides and, and are already there's things to change and new improvements that we've made and things that we tweak. So even though it's similar, we've continued to even see our own journey, just you know, touching it every couple months. And we even switched up slides, had Erica take some of the content that I cover and then um, I take some of the, the content that she covered. So, Isn't that almost like the very definition of DevOps though? Right, that it, 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 I said to, I was talking with Mick Kirsten yesterday, and they, you can't dip your toe into the same DevOps stream twice, right? <laughs> because it, it's it's constantly changing, and, yep. and that, you know, that is is part of the the allure or the fascination, not the fascination, but the the advantages here is it's a constantly evolving, we're continuously improving, continuously making progress, hopefully, and and it's. And it's not always linear, right? We, we've learned this lesson. Yep. Yep. I think you guys have learned it too, right? There are, you don't always get the results yeah. you were hoping yeah. or expecting. I actually have a slide that says success is not a straight line journey. So yeah, exactly, it yeah. really isn't. Sometimes I, I wrote an article after in San Francisco called the DevOps Cha-Cha, where sometimes it's two steps forward, three steps back, three steps forward, two steps back. But, yeah. but over the course of, of three years now, right, where we've checked in here, it's almost like a reality TV show, right? <laughs> Over the course of the three years, and you'll look back, and the progress is unmistakable. Yep, yep, I agree. And that's the key here. Wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. So, you know, at, at uh, does here in UK this year, we've seen some several themes kind of reoccurring, and, and a lot, not accidentally, it was the committee who selected speakers. Right, so a couple of things they've looked at is business leadership, business leadership, mm -hmm. business buy-in, value stream teams, right? The importance of continuous testing, DevSecOps, mm -hmm. and then um, you want to call it uh, not new age, next gen ops or new ops or whatever you okay. want to call it. How have these themes factored into your experiences? Well, I think, so, I'll, I'll go first. So I think the, on the value stream and kind of product alignment, I mean, that's something um, obviously that Mick talks quite a bit about and kind of moving kind of from this project model and 
the IT separated from the business model and thinking in terms much more of kind of long-lived products. That's something we, we've always believed in and we've continued to try to improve that model at CSG. Um, also, you know, bringing in product management, um, having product management understand how operations works, getting um, the engineering teams to understand how product management and strategy works and really kind of bringing those, those things together. So obviously here at the conference, there's a lot of talk about, about those types of alignments and that's something that we've been um, really vested in and really vested into trying to continue to improve, um, uh, improve the alignment but also improve the relationships with the business stakeholders. Fair enough. So. And on the security side, we've been really growing that part too, where we're shifting left with security. So now they're really embedded in, in everything that we're doing with a, a development organization, right? So we, and Scott mentioned this in his talk, security is everybody's job. And Good so that, that's been a, a culture shift for us. And we're now revisiting everything about our development pipeline and making sure that we're building security in from the very beginning. How's that going? Good, good. I mean, we had, um, you know, I, I mentioned in my talk, but we, um, we had a big investment in, um, in PCI, but also in working with the audit team on really the requirements around what they expected to see. And we did that before going through the audit, so prepare, <laughs> you know, and really understanding, okay, this is their expectations. These are the types of things. These are the processes that they go through. And we actually engineered solutions to bring those audit uh, the audit verification and controls actually into our engineering processes automate those things so that, you know, it, it took us like 20,000 hours of work to do the audit previously and we reduced that period of time for um, our, our build verifications or specifications down to um, uh, around 4,000 hours. So it's about an 80% I mean, reduction phenomenal, uh, right? in effort. Um, but also the, it built the relationship. So there's engineering to it, which is engineering, and but the human, element. the human element of building that um, relationship and investing in the audit, right, and, and understanding instead of them being a foreign entity that comes in and is like, hey, you didn't do what you're supposed to do, and now we're embracing them and really involving them and say, okay, let's work together and help the engineering teams understand the expectations of audit and, and you know, train them together. So outstanding. So. And we, I think we really leveraged that foundational uh, relationship then. When we did, we talked about our first public cloud launch. We moved, we moved to AWS recently for one of our applications. And we had to get our security partners buy-in. And I, I think at some point in the past, right, similar to Dev and Ops, you have security and dev fighting each other, just like Dev and Ops used to fight each other, where, uh, where your goal wasn't necessarily the Aligned. same. And because of a lot of empathy and understanding, we were able to partner with them and then use uh, technology, basically automate running through. We have to meet PCI standards and so we were able to automate confirming that we were meeting the hardening standards that were needed which means that getting our security team's blessing was, was I, I mean there was a lot of work to get to it but it, it wasn't a battle we were on the same team yep. they were a part of many many uh things with us and they understand the solution and we may now be able to to leverage that and grow it to grow other even teams. more yeah. i mean but let's just step back and, and think about this right so the idea of preparing for the audit before the audit takes place, dumb, right? What a, what a novel approach. But yet, even for you guys, it was, it was new to, yep. to do this, right? And, and 80% 80 80 savings, phenomenal. Well, and even involving product management in those decisions to say, hey, we're going to need to take capacity out of backlog, mm -hmm. as opposed to it being you know, a surprise that all of a sudden you got to scramble. Uh, you know, there was intent up front to say we're going to reserve capacity, we're going to work on this, we're going to engineer some things. Product management's bought into that. They understand why it's important. So, I mean, those are all... Right. all uh, I mean, and, and in terms of PCI and compliance, you know, some of my background security so is something you know, important to me, but I've always said that, look, compliance is a byproduct of good security. You don't need to do compliance mm -hmm by itself. If you've got good security controls, you've got good buy-in with your security team, you will be complying in what you're doing. Yeah. It's people who don't prepare for the audit till after the yeah. audit who wind up flogging the PCI audit, yeah. right? And, and so, it, again, it seems rather elemental, but yet it's monumental. And, and I think that's yeah. just phenomenal, guys. I'm going to throw something out at you. What, I think what we're seeing, or what I've seen, right, and I, I more observe, right, I, talking to people here and listening. 
Um, so now we've got DevSecOps built in. You've got some of your product management teams built in. I think the next kind of frontier we're seeing is bringing DevOps to the business planning stage. Right? Yep. Mm-hmm. How can we plan our next... You know, we rolled out to the public cloud with this application. Mm-hmm. What's the next application we're doing? And are we going to build a cloud native? Are we... You know, what are we doing with DevSecOps with it? How are we involving product management? How are we doing all that? Is, is that kind of on the horizon? Is business planning in there now? I think the answer is yes. In, in, our, in our company, it's actually a little bit easier because we, we're already a product company. In other words, we're building software products. So with our product management team, Basically, we do you know we do strategy to, we do strategy every year to kind of lay out the the roadmap, and a lot of the leadership like at my level in engineering uh, and other leaders are involved in that. So we're already kind of doing that now. I think that's going to be a bit different than maybe traditional companies that have that had a separate IT org right. and that had a strategy you know a strategy group and a business groups. Yeah, we're, we're fortunate enough that that's a, a bit easier to to integrate together because. We were a product company already, and we had a product management function. Product management function was obviously very involved with engineering because working together on on the implementation. So um, extending it more now for engineering also to be advisors, but also really kind of feeding back. The thing that where we are now spending a good amount of time is feeding back into product management a lot of the operational concerns, whether it's security, whether it's uh, reliability, like those types of things. And getting those on the strategy roadmap, those are things that uh, are incredibly important, right? But before, those weren't necessarily kind of integrated in. So that's a big focus area for us. So even the concept of, of having a yearly kind of roadmap, yep. is that going the way of the dinosaur, you think? Well, I think that's got to be more often, to be clear. And, yeah. and just because we have a yearly roadmap doesn't mean we don't adjust plans, right. just, to, just to be clear. So, um, and that actually happens all the time, too. Uh, you know, it's and people, called it's, life, it's right? Like we're right. changing right. again? I'm like, yes, there's new business priorities. Right. So just because you do annual product strategy plans doesn't mean that we don't adjust right. those halfway through the year when we find new discoveries. And that, and that does happen. It's something that we've discovered with the, the better relationship with our product management team. They've done a, a lot of work making things visible. Not, I mean, we're very familiar with Agile and making stories and, and features okay. visible, but even at the higher level, as we're planning and something we talked through as a team is that we don't do, we don't revisit that like one to end priority on a regular cadence and we need to do that. We may talk about here's one new thing and where does it fit in that priority, but continually visiting the whole list because things move so much faster now than they used to that it really needs to be on a, a, on a more frequent basis, at least quarterly. We release four times a year. And so that, that kind of makes sense to us, like once per PI to, mm-hmm. to take a look at that. So let me bring up another topic and interested in your thoughts on it. And that is, I don't know if you want to call it next gen ops, new ops, whatever, but sort of re-energizing ops. I, I you know, I think the attraction for DevOps to the ops folks was less repetition, more automation, jazz up their life, right? Give them something not quite as repetitive mm-hmm. and interesting to do. Um, but we need to, you need to keep, you know, once you start feeding that beast, you got to keep the beast happy. What do you, where do you see that? How do you, how do, you do that at your organization? That's okay. <laughs> a good question. So, I think um, I think in terms, I think one of the things we're looking at now, obviously, uh, well, we went to the uh, we went to the Google SRE presentation. Yes. So I think that's an area for us in particular. To um, both Erica and I come from uh, a software engineering background, so um, a lot of experience in building software and teams. Um, that that construct the software. Operations is a a little new to us. Um, We've brought incredible value to operations with our software skills, but obviously there are uh, practices and skills and operations that um, I believe we need to invest in around the kind of site reliability engineering concepts, 
uh, the concepts um, uh, you know, around kind of having air budgets and refining those um, and really holding the organization accountable for reliability on the products and investing in that. That's an area for us that uh, um, I, I believe we, we need to invest in. So, so I don't know if that falls into your next generation ops question, but it is something that um, I have seen, you know, obviously these other companies do very well, that um, I, I think is worth, in, worth improving. So, look, it's your next generation ops, not mine, yeah. right? <laughs> you guys got to define it. Yeah. But, I mean, certainly, certainly SRE is, 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 par is part of that. Um, I, I think, you know, moving to, the p to public cloud kind of it goes almost hand in glove with that as well. But, you know, it, 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 we, it, again, it's part of the maturation of, of DevOps. Right. Just before you guys came in, we did a panel on how DevOps is working in ITSM and IDLE and sort of that traditional yep. ops yep. thing, which a lot of people shunned initially from DevOps. Right. Yep. Um, we we need to keep kind of reinventing, eh, not reinventing. We need to keep building on things that we know are good and that we've proven out to be good. Yep. And, and build on top of it. And you, you mentioned automating manual work as a big mm -hmm. change that we've had with, with ops. And that's really just part of the equation, right? So you can automate it, but you have to have that mindset change. So yeah. think about infrastructure as code, right? So we can move something to a chef or a puppet or an Ansible. But then what, is, what does that role look like now that it's all codified? You know, How do we evolve to infrastructure as a service and some of those exactly. sorts of things? And, and what does that mean for the human who was the, yeah. who's the op guy? Right, it's one thing to say, "Oh, he's not really happy. He's just automating, you know, doing repetitive tasks." It's another thing to say, "Don't worry, we've changed, we've automated what you did, but we're going to find something interesting for you. You, you might still have a job." Yep. He's got a family, or she has a family to feed. Yeah. Right, and and that's that's, that's a scary proposition. It, it is. is, and that you know that knowledge gained, regardless if it was done manually or automated. That's something that's not replaceable and not going away. So we've got to find new ways to yeah, use you, that knowledge and, and leverage it. Yeah. And you know, so like take the case of a of an SA, right? So somewhat of a linear relationship in an automated world to how many servers you can support. Well, now it's going to be exponential. So what uh, what does that mean? And what does that what does that look like? And uh, kind of defining those things, I think, are where we're at in our journey with yeah. our operational team. So again, yeah, this, this is DBAs, part of it, right? Yeah. DBAs. That's no, another thing. Like right? go to cloud database. You know. Means something different, right? Very different, right? Because the operations is taken care of, the scaling, the backup. There, there are things now that you know DBAs need to be reskilled, retrained on. Really, kind of data engineering, and you know, really designing, you know, uh, you know, doing data analytics and those types of things, as opposed to having to worry about how to scale a database. So those are those are big areas of uh, of change that we're we're coming up we, looking we, at we now. We look at patterns. The same thing you're talking about here with DBAs, we were talking about with QA people three, four years ago. Mm. Yep. We need to give them, we need to retrain them, we need to have them doing more code, we need to have them writing the scripts for automation, we need to have them doing more valuable things. Mm. We need to have our ops people doing more valuable things. We are going to allow our DBAs to do more valuable things. That, I think, is the essence. Well, the and, essence and, and to me, it's also a lot about kind of partnership on that team, right? So often, and Damon hits on this, is often there's some ticket that goes off to a group and it's a DBA or an SA and they execute that ticket and they send it back and unfortunately the ticket usually, what the result of the ticket ends up not being right and it bounces all over the place. That creates a very kind of disconnected, kind of missionless, you know, workforce. You're just processing stuff where I really view it, this is great opportunity to have DBAs and SAs, you know, be on a mission-oriented team to deliver a product, right? And that is much more satisfying work to work in an environment I I like, like that, as opposed to some anonymous ticket queue that you're processing work out of. And then the other thing that's great about that is knowledge scales, and we know that we can have DBAs train other people on how to do database work, and we know that the QA engineers can train DBAs on how to do testing and, and, and across that. So um, to me, that's a much more rewarding environment for uh, folks to live in because you get the collaboration, you get the mission orientation. So we're talking, you know, in DevOps lingo, we're talking about comb, 
kind of people versus T-shaped, yeah, right? Correct. And all of that good things. Mm -hmm. and, but that's also, look, for those who are out there, this is your future. You want to have a successful career. You want to be versatile. You want to be right, able to, to thrive in, in, in these environments that are high-performing IT organizations today. That's what you need to be. You yep. got to be willing to change. You got to embrace the change and make yourself more useful to do higher value types of tasks. And figuring out what those higher value tasks are is part of that journey too. No so doubt. if you, you aren't doing every server build manually or every database call and change, now, mm -hmm. now what are we looking at? Which is where some of the SRE stuff comes in as well, right? And so what are the different things that we need to be doing and, and best practices with those individuals? And you know what? This is where leadership comes in too. Yep. Right? Because sometimes part of the role of leadership is to help these people understand, hey, what is it that we're going to, that we find more valuable? Right? He, he or she may not know. But I, you know, I, as a leader, can tell you what we value here and what we want. And, and it's all good. Guys, we're, we're past our time. I know we, uh, we try. <laughs> we do the best we can. <laughs> but, you know, let me end with this. Eric has got three plus years here, right, of, of presenting, giving us a peek kind of inside the kimono at, at your own DevOps journey. It's been incredibly valuable, I, I think, to people who attend us and to people who watch it out on YouTube and, and stuff. And, of course, this presentation will be on DevOps TV. Your presentations, it does, will be on IT Revolution's YouTube channel. So I encourage everyone to take a look at it. And while you're there, go back and look at past years and see for yourself this thing. It, it's a tremendous job you've done. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. you. Scott, Erica, always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming, as I said. This is Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com, DevOps TV from DevOps Enterprise London or UK 2018. Have a great day, everyone.